Um, I need to I need to lift Jessica up in prayer. Um, just um, the Lord knows. Amen. Anybody else have something you want to share? Remember all the lost loved ones? Yes, amen. Never. The group of afflicted that um, I spoke among Friday, they all asked for prayer. All right. Anybody else? Remember the gentleman that just passed away. I'll see you Apartments. They were up there cleaning out his apartment yesterday, and the daughter, she's having a hard time, so it's never her. Amen. Brother, Brother Darrell, how did that surgery go with that young man? Yeah, young boy. Yeah, young boy. Oh, he's back home doing great. Doing good. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've been, I've been wondering about him. <laughs> Yes, Lord Jesus. God, move upon all your requests, Lord. Touch every heart of every person that's here. Dear God, those that ask prayer, Lord, we pray for the ones that they ask prayer for. Thank you for touching me and with him, boy, Lord. God, bring them through the surgery, Lord. We pray, God, that you move upon lost loved ones, Lord. Backslidden, Lord, of light, Lord. Those afflicted, dear God, Sister Tammy talked to, we pray for them, Lord. We pray, God, that you would just move your Heavenly Father, Lord. Bless our brother, Lord. Ron, if you bring for me. Yes, touch Sister Shirley, Lord. Touch her body, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, we do, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at a topic today. In a way, I guess it's good that Brother Stevens has got the, I don't know if he got it on Facebook. Yeah, you're, you're going right now. Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to look at these uh, scriptures about male and female, and we thank God for the blessings that we have. We live in a time today when things are so mixed up, and people are so confused, they don't know what to believe. That's true. They don't believe anything, and, and people, there's corporations that have been bought into it, there's people that are, are basically sinners that need to be Amen. the truth. That's right. Amen. All right, Genesis 1, 26-31. It says, and I'll just go ahead and read that one. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air, Fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over everything that hath moveth, that moveth upon the earth. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree of the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the earth, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is his life. I have given you every green herb for meat, and it was so. Amen. Amen. You know, what, what we have to realize is the creation that we experience is God created man. It's not man created man. It's not man that's uh, in control, but it's in God's control. Amen. And we thank God for his blessings, his love, and privilege, and we have to praise him. Amen. All right. Does anybody else have a Amen. comment?
next one I have is Mark 10, chapter uh, chapter 10, verses 1 through 9. Mark 10. Mark chapter 10, verses 1 through 9. 1 through 9. And he arose from thence, and cometh into the coast of Judea by the further side of Jordan. And the people resorted unto him again, and as he was walked, he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him? And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto him, unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of creation God made them male and female. And this cause shall for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. To them they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Amen. We live in a time today where that's not true, where man makes his own decisions. We have to realize that God is faithful unto everyone that calls upon him and puts their faith and confidence and trust in him. Anybody have any comment on these scriptures that we read? Well, Brother Ron, I'll look at Facebook just in a little bit. Somebody put a comment on there, and, and I got t shirts already made. There's more than two genders. Mm. And I thought, mm. so I commented back on her. I said, no, there's only two. That's what. That's the way God made it. Whenever He created heaven and earth, He made male and female. So I don't know where it went to from there, but <laughs> I never see any comments on it. Well, we live in a time today where that's basically accepted in society, and I don't know anywhere that the Adam and Steve. <laughs> right. I don't see anywhere where Adam and Eve uh, has been faithful unto God. This is what the, is the problem is: that man has been unfaithful to God, and we have to realize that God is caring about us and understanding. We have to put our faith and confidence and trust in Him. Yeah, Amen. All right. Anybody have a comment? <clears throat> you know, Brother Ron, when God created us, He created simple. He created man and woman to reproduce. And and what I found out, the devil can't create, but he perverts that which is created. And that's what he's done. He's perverted it. And uh, even though it's simple, God says, okay, man and woman's got to produce and bring forth. Man and man and women and women will never be able to reproduce and bring forth because that is not the design of God. Well, you know, we live in a time today where... <clears throat> We have to realize the Word of God is our answer. And if somebody asks you, the Scripture says, that you give every man an answer of the hope that lies within you. We have to be faithful to God, to honoring Him and praising Him. We live in a time today where basically man has made his own decision, but everybody wants to make a decision for somebody else. And it's not my decision that they do these things. It's not my decision that cures are... Bud Light or Target or any of these do these things, but it's an agenda that they have. It's trying to make God seem like he is uh, far away, that God doesn't care about us, and God understands everything about us. Yes. And you know, it's, it's, it's brainwashing our children. Right. Absolutely. I was, I was at work yesterday, and there's this little girl. She couldn't be no more than one year old. And... The, the shirt she had on cried. My heart instantly broke. Yes. Because it seems that parents are fighting for their children to be whatever gender they want them to be. These parents are teaching these children, you know, it's like my, my daughter is, don't you teach my child about your God. But yet, she's teaching her child. Yeah. I, I don't understand. I just, society. I just don't. I don't. My heart just breaks. Yes, yes, amen. 
rejuvenate children too much <coughs> it's just like if you, if you use <coughs> cow balance if you want french fries or if you want green beans well they're going to put some french fries every time you know because they have to have that taste and that's what's that's what's happening they're, they're, they know that they're enticing these kids well maybe i'm going to try to be a boy or maybe i'm going to try to be a girl and that's what's going on so the devil is taking mm-hmm. the scripture taste and see and perverted it yeah Yes. Right. Well, the sad part is that the majority of society does not believe the Word of God anyway. Right. They want to do what they want to do. They want to make their own decisions. They want to make their own choices. And this is what's caused the problem that we have in society today. Oh, they'll say, I don't believe that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the number one thing you get with, I don't believe that. When well, I've talked to people in the past about things like this, they, especially about parents, you know, parents leading the fight, or no, not leading the fight, uh, leading the way, and yes. have their kids change. When that child gets older, I wonder what he's going to think. Right. My mom and dad wasn't happy with me, I was a girl or I was a boy, but they wanted something else. Mm-hmm. Right. The devil's just stirring up a lot of anger <coughs> and a lot of rage, and you know, all of this is is part of what's coming to an end. I mean, eventually, it's, I was talking to someone the other day, and I was like, you know, I remember when I was growing up, we could leave our doors open and our windows open at night. You know, it was safe to, you know, we had to be in, of course, when the street lamps come on. Right. But, um, and if we ran away, we couldn't leave the yard. So, I mean, it was, it was, and then to think today people have, like, you know, these things on their porch because you worry about somebody stealing your mail or your packages or, I mean, it's just, it, it, the world's, it's just spinning, spinning yeah. right in, out of control. Man. We've become a victim of society. And yeah. Society controls every action that we have. Yes. We have to realize that the Word of God should be our standard. The Word of God should be something that we share Word of God should be something that we live. We live in a time today where people make their own decisions. And you may have your decision about God, but the whole point is God is still God. He's yes. still directing our footsteps, and we need to honor Him and praise Him. Amen. Thank God for every victory that He's given us. All right, anybody have anything else? You know, we're living in the, in the world that, you know, you have to be what 18 to get a driver's license mm-hmm. right 16, 16 yeah. now uh, but you have to be 18 to vote uh, and don't get me wrong and i'm not endorsing drinking but you have to be at least 21 to get into a, a bar unless you're in the military but you can be five years old and decide come on know. that's it yeah <laughs> what yeah you want to be right and have no. surgery and start taking Yep. They're trying to pass that law to where you're, they're not going to put the gender on the birth certificate anymore. No, I know. And they have to see a therapist before the age of five, and the therapist will tell the parents and the what the child is going to be. It, yep. does, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many operations you have. Mm-hmm. When you die, you're going to be who you are. That's it. That's it. You know, I was talking to someone just recently about they were born with both female, male and female organs man had to perform an operation to decide what they were going to be and somebody said well they should have been a boy they should have been a girl but the whole point was they made them a girl but the the thing was that they wanted the boy they wanted to, to put their faith and confidence and trust in him i know there's mistakes that people make but we have to realize it's my mistake i made it Thank God that He's guided my footsteps. I put my trust and my confidence and my my everything in Him because He's He's all I have. Mm-hmm. I don't live in a world today where somebody makes a decision for me. I live in a world that I make a decision, but I need to know the Word of God. I need to know what God's Word says. We live in a time today where basically God has been pushed out. God has been to the point that there is no God. And they, in fact, they, they say that uh, they today that they say that uh, 
God was neither male nor female. But yeah. that, that may be true, but the whole point is, he's still God. Yeah. And we live in a time today where the man is relegated to the position that he's no longer uh, what he should be. And we have, we're in a situation today where the people make their own decisions and do their own thing because that's what they want to do. Yeah. It's not what God wants. God wants us to be every bit completely what he wants us to be. They live on their own feelings. Yeah. Let their feelings that's it. Right. On the thought of pushing God out, you know, one of these days they're going to get through this. Yeah. Well, but the sad part is that these are the signs of the times. These are things that's happening today. And there's going to come an end to every situation that man's made the decision that God's no longer God, that God's no longer uh, directing our footsteps. We need to put faith and confidence and trust in Him. You know, they, they're, they're wanting to push the, they want to push God out, they want to push the Christians out. I believe it's going to be just like when Pharaoh, they, they all wanted the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But notice when they was out, they began to come, they began to realize that they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. now, you know, they're, they're pushing God out. One of these days, the, the world and the church is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Or the church and God's going to be gone. And they're going to be crying out. You know, as the scripture says, they're going to be crying out to the mountains. And the rocks will fall on them to hide themselves from the face of God. But your whole point is, you believe there is a God. I believe there's a God. I believe that we answer to God. I believe that we live in a time today where nobody answers to anybody. Everybody makes their own decision. Do what you want to do. Live the way you want to live. But that's not true. We have to put faith and confidence and trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> All right. You know what's ironic, Brother Ron, is that they want to do away with the, the Bible and God. And, and, and the very thing they want to do away with prophesied and told us what was going to happen. I mean, how can a Bible that or a book that's not accurate or uh, divinely written be so accurate? You know, uh, thousands and thousands of years ago in Abraham's time, Lot decided to go down to Sodom. And Sodom, one of the greatest sins they had. Now, they had a lot of sins in that city, just like America today. But one of the predominant ones was the homosexuality, that they seen two angels and they were so fair they wanted to have relations with them and turned down two women to have relations with. And the Bible says, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. So yeah. that's that's now, because, I mean, why is that sexual, how, why is that sin taking precedent over all the other sins? They're, pu they're pushing that and legalizing it. They're pushing down people's throats. They're trying to teach their children, like they said. Why is, why is that sin? Because that was one of the pr predominant sins in Lot's time. It happened back then, and it's happening today, just like it did back then. And for thousands of years, it hadn't happened. Now, all of a sudden, it's happened. That is because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it also be in the coming of the Son of Man. All right, anybody else have a comment? Do you know what the letters ego, e -G -O, <clears throat> ego stands for? What's it stand for? Easing God out. That's true. That's, that's, that's the problem with most people. They've got too much ego. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any other comments? No, if we could only get, well, it would be a miracle to get the whole world to understand and read the Bible that God don't make no mistakes. His right. He says, I knew you and I before you even formed in your mother's womb. Right. I warned you and I brought you forth. So, you know, whatever we are born as from our mother, that's what we are. And we've got to realize that God don't make no mistakes. Right. Everybody's got their opinion, you know, but they just don't believe. That's true. Come on down. Okay. What is it?
things I say about opinions. Yeah. Uh, most of them stink. Yeah. All right. First Corinthians six one through twelve says what? Dare any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brethren goeth to law with the brethren and that, that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take, take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, you do wrong and defraud and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves and mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, nor shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. How far did you say? All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. Amen. Verse 9 says what again? Know ye not that the not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, nor fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Amen. Yes. Verse 10, and neither more thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God, and such were some of you. Yes. Amen. Thank God that I am born again. I Amen. Set free from that curse of Satan that's guiding my footsteps. Amen. All right. Anybody have any comment? Okay. Second Corinthians or First Corinthians eleven one through nine. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am with, am with Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that, that ye remember in all things and keep the ordinance, ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the, the hand the head of every man is Christ, and the head of, of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonors her head. For that is even all one as if she were saved. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as a woman is of the man, even so is a man also by the woman. But all things are of God. Is that enough? That's enough. Well, you know, what it says in Scripture there, that's, that is a big problem. I am not servant or servant to anyone. I am not going to let anybody tell me what to do. Nobody's going to be my guide. Nobody. And don't make it if it's a man or a woman. I'll do my own thing. I'll make my own decisions. It's my choice. 
I choose to do what I want to do, not what you ask me. Sounds like Satan. I think that what's happened is in society today, a woman basically has been relegated to a position of less than a man. But Scripture says that woman that God created man and woman. God's creation is God has a purpose for every one of us. God's purpose for us is to be obedient unto Him, that we honor Him and praise Him. We we live in a time today where the woman is less than what she should be, and and I agree with that in some sense senses of the word. But at the same time, we have to realize that honor is to whom honor is due. We have to honor God. I have to honor Him and praise Him. We have a position that we, every one of us, have to be faithful in, and that is to serve God, number one. Let Him be Lord of everything in our lives. Let Him be trusted and let Him be confident that He knows what He's doing. Does anybody have a comment? Okay. Number five right here at work says, But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, this honors her head, for that it is even all one as if she were shaved. Does that mean we're supposed to have something on our head when we pray? Well, that that is Old Testament basically is what it's actually saying. It's, it's actually having a meaning. We have to realize that we have to put faith and confidence in one another. We have to realize that we have a position that we have to fulfill. And that position is a position of humbleness. That is a position of complete surrender unto God more than anything else. I don't make my decisions. I don't do what I want to do. I do what God wants me to do. And like I said earlier, man has taken the position that, that he is, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. And that's not what it's said in the scriptures. It's saying that every one of us have a position that we have to fulfill. Every one of us have to be faithful unto him under him in every way. And we live in a time today where they basically they can do whatever they want to do, say whatever they want to say. And how many times have we seen TV shows and everything that said, this is my husband. And it's a man saying this to a man. This is a, a woman saying this to a woman. That, that's actually say, taking away the gender that is taking away from the position that we have. We have to be what God wants us to be. We have to be faithful unto Him and honoring Him. Amen. Anybody have any comment? <clears throat> uh, just to add to what you just said, it is about submission, but what He's dealing with is, is the veil. Okay. And what the question was to Him was, should they word or not? And see, you had at that time, just to let you know at the time they're living in, you had people coming that was in, they was uh, in Harlot, you know, just they, they looked all, you know, and so he, he started writing to them and, and putting it in order and saying, look, the main thing is about, as Brother Ron said, it's about submission to one another. But if you read on down a little further, it says the hair is given for the covering. So no, to answer your question, no, women don't have to wear veils. That was just the way they done it. That was their custom back then. You know, that's why he said, if you read on down, he'll say, uh, we don't have such custom in the church of God. So, you know, it, it talks about us being contentious. Just to answer your question, but, but it's all about submission. It's more of an attitude that he's dealing with. Instead of where the her, you know. When I read that, I read it a couple of times. Right. I asked, like, you know, that mean, you know? Yeah, that's what he was dealing with because they was having an issue with people coming there into the sanctuary. They wouldn't wear veils. And others, it was traditionally, like Brother Ron said, in the Old Testament, they wore veils. That was kind of the way they done it to show their submission to their husband. Right. And they was coming out of that veils on. He was like, look, we don't have a custom about this. Your hair is given for you covering. Go with that, you know. Basically, he was saying, uh, as far as the nature, he was saying, man should like men, women will like women. Right. And that goes back to what Brother Ron's teaching this morning. Right. You know, that men are trying to act like women, women trying to act like men. Mm -hmm. And God's not, uh, he's not, he's a spirit. So he's not, uh, they say male or female, but the thing is, he's, he's masculine. Because he made Adam after his own image. Mm -hmm. So he made him manly, masculine. Yeah. Women was, come from man. So she was, that's why they call her one man, because she had a womb when she can have a child. Man can't have children. So that's, you know, kind of the whole thing wrapped up what he's saying in a nutshell. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, just, just thought I'd add a little bit to it. Anybody have any comments? All right. Ephesians 
Ephesians 5. 1 through 33. Ephesians 5. 1 through 33. Therefore, followers of God as dear children to walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be named once among you as become a saint, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an, uh, I, as an, is an and, uh, idolater. <clears throat> who is an, an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. Be ye not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but ye now, now ye are the light of the Lord. Walk as children of the light. I'm going to read that verse again. For you were, you were sometimes darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and having no fellowship with the untruthful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame you to speak those things which are done of them in secret. But all things are reproved, are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See that ye walk, circum walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore he is... Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Let me read that verse again. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk, drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking yourselves in psalms and hymns, and scriptural psalms, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Give my thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. As the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wife be to their own husbands. And everything, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Amen. He might present to it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. So are uh, men also to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hateth his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherishes it. Even as I hit that button every time. <laughs> <laughs> that same problem. You're like right in the middle of something you hit. You sound like a recording. Space is cut you off. Verse 31, For this call shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Amen. Nevertheless, that every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as, I, as, as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. All right. Anybody have any comment on those? Hard. It's hard to love it. Why? Well, because, not to get personal, but I know many 
in my mouth a lot of times it gets me in trouble. Amen. <laughs> now wait a minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> but I have found over the years, uh, I would say 99.9% of the time, Ronnie's right and I am wrong. So I try to improve on that situation. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. But I always try to keep in mind that what God wants for me is the very best. The very best. And I, I, I appreciate what he's done for me, and I love him. Amen. Amen. But the whole point is, if, if I was not a servant of God, would you still follow what I said? Would you do what I expect you to do? Not that I am. If I was a child of God, I would do what I had to do towards you, but still, God would be number one. Yeah. Scripture says, yeah, seek yeah. first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We have to realize that is what we have to strive for, is being what God wants us to be. And we have to pray for those that are uh, going the wrong direction. We have to be faithful unto God and trust him and lean upon him, because he is the answer that we all have. All right. Any other comments? You know, verse 24 and 25 says, Therefore the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands and everything. And a lot of times men are like, woo -hoo! you know. <laughs> but the very next verse says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself forth. The, the men have the greater love to give. They must, they must have. What I mean is, is Christ laid down his life for the church. So we are to love our wives enough to lay down our life for them. So it ain't all about being the boss, it's, it's about being submission. And I think that's what the whole thing is about. Is the, the, the head, which is the man, should be subject to Christ. And then if the woman is subject to the man following Christ, they're both subject to Christ, you know. All right, anybody have any comments? I just think, uh, let's see, where was that? Five and eight. That was also part of Sermon on the Mount. It's if you go over to, you know, Matthew 14, it says, you are the light, well, I'm going to go to 13. You are the salt of the earth, but but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing, but to throw out and be trampled underfoot by men. 14, you are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. You can text me a few times. <laughs> all right. Anybody have any comments? Brother Ron, verse 33, I look at reference up on it, it goes to First Peter. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, it says, Likewise, you wise be in subjection to your own husband, that if any, not, if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of their wives. While they behold your chaste conversation, suffer the few. Through the door and let it not be the outward adorned with not in the hair of water gold or put it on of appearance, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, and was very tried. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God, adorned themselves in his subjection unto their own husband, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, Calling him Lord, whose daughters you are also, as long as you do well and are not afraid, but there's a name. Verse 7 it says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and being heirs together as the grace of life, that your prayer be not hindered. We have to give, well, I'm not married, but I have been. I lost my wife. You know, we can't uh, disrespect them. 
because they don't have the same belief that we do. We've got to live with them and give them honor and praise because that is the will of God that we do. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed, unto, showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools, and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like into corruptible men, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up into vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burn in their lust one toward another, man with man, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of the error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not com convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boisterous, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You know, the scriptures that we just read just basically tell us exactly what the society we live in today is. <laughs> it is, yeah, and true. We have to realize that we have to trust God for guidance and direction. Yes. It's, it's not what I believe, it's what the Word of God says. And the Word of God has been proven time and time again. Mm -hmm. We have to realize that our message is still the same. Jesus Christ saves from sin. Yes. But the thing is, people today don't want to call sin, sin. That's right. They just allow anything goes. Just make your own decision. Do your own thing. Make your own choice. All right. Anybody have anything else before we close? Just to me, screams repent. We as Christians have to get back to repentance. If my people called by that my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive them. It seems like we have all have Christians. We have failed. We have failed. We have dropped the ball. And we've got to start standing and start repenting for our country, start repenting for the world he's lost babies, start repenting for all of these lost things that we've let happen. Yes. We have got to get back and repent. Amen. 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 I appreciate that. Amen. That's true. All right. Anybody have any other comments? All right. Thank you.
Oh, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the truth that sets us free. Thank you for your love and grace and mercy. Continue to move upon their spoken request and unspoken as well. God, as we enter into worship and praise, Lord, through the next phase, Lord, of this service, we ask God to bless us, Lord. Bless this service, Lord. Bless the preaching. Jesus, in the name of the Lord, we pray.